Good evening, everybody. You're all very welcome to the celebration of the latest All-Ireland champion for the locality, Mr. Peter Dolan. I'd just like to say uh, a big thanks to Tommy and Louise. Uh, they've been absolutely marvellous since the first time I got a phone call and I was asked would I do, uh, would I do a, recit a recitation and I was only too delighted and honoured uh, to do it. Louise and Tommy have been absolutely marvellous in all the help and the direction and the work that they put in on it. And I'd just like to say thanks to all the people who sent me texts of good luck and cards and everything else. It's absolutely marvellous. And I can tell you it's a pure honour for me to stand here in front of the in front of my hometown and hold up an All Ireland medal. That's it, so thank you very much to you all. Thank you very much. Some people said I was shy, others said I was a wee bit slow. Me father blamed me mother for rearing me a lazy sod, but she maintained it was all his fault because all his crowd were odd. <laughs> ah, but I had me eye on Mary Ann this last 18 years or so, and the only thing that held me back was in case she might say no. You see, the problem was. I had turned her down back in her younger days. Now, it wasn't that, that she had got any better looking. It was just that I was a little less hard to please. <laughs> well, I was put in contact with this man, an expert in these things, who swore to me he had a plan and I should go and buy the rings. Says he, if you follow my get a woman plan, in a week or so I'll have her eaten out of your hand. <laughs> To see the next time that you meet her, pay her a lot of heed, have a good look at what she's wearing, see if there's nothing she might need. Perhaps a scarf around her neck or something for her hair. And if you like the plan, come back to me and she'll be taken on from there. Well, be gone that very evening as it was going down for a pint. Who did I meet but Mary Ann and she come and peddling on the bike. And just as we were meeting, along comes this great big, truck blew the clothes nearly clean off her and didn't I get a real good look? <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't that much she needed now. Well, as far as I could see, <laughs> all her rods and ends were covered up from just above the knee. <laughs> ah, but there and then I spied it. What a man could buy for the woman he loves. Sure, it was sitting there in front of me. She wasn't wearing <laughs> well, uh, I went to town the next Thursday on the bus from Ferran to try and buy a pair of gloves, the first part of the plan. I told me ma what I was doing, and could she recommend the kind? She said you'd be better off to be buying a pair for yourself and not always be borrowing mine. But she said, look, sure I'll go with you. You might need me to try them on. Well, that wasn't part of the plan now, but uh, I said I'd play along. <laughs> She says, we go to the little drapery shop that's owned by Fred Mac Vickers. I'm in an awful way for a pair of pants. <laughs> that's what women now call knickers. <laughs> well, when I got to the shop, sure, sure I was completely mesmerised. But when the shopman asked me, I didn't know her size. I felt an awful eager. I didn't know what to do. I said, be gob, you have me there. Uh, but she's about a seven in a show. <laughs> well, I bought a pair about her size, well, as far as I could tell. Oh, a lovely leather pair with a gorgeous leather pair spell. And then I spied a man's pair up upon the shelf, and I remembered what my ma had said, so I bought them for myself. But when I got home, 
I took me ma's advice, and I splashed on the remains of a bottle of old spice. And then I said, Ma, where's the shopping? She says, it's up upon the bed. But Jesus, when I went to pick up the clothes, didn't I pick the knickers up instead? <laughs> well, I left the house as proud as punch, not realising what I'd done. And I leapt up on the tractor and I got it started on the run. And when I got to Mary Ann's, I could see she was all alone. So I parked the tractor on the slope and I faced her for home. <laughs> then I kind of sidled up to the door and on the day they knock. When Mary Ann came out, I said, now it's time we had a talk. <laughs> and here's a wee something. I got him back bicker shop and I handed her the present with the little love heart on the top. <laughs> well, when she opened up the present, she didn't look one bit pleased. And the bit of a grin that had been there before had quickly been erased. I said, be gob, she doesn't like the gloves. And I felt an awful dread. As her face began to tighten and the hair stood on her head, I said, well, 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 to tell the truth, I liked them when I saw them on the shelf. In fact, I liked them that much, uh, I bought a pair myself. <laughs> you see, when it'd be cold, I'd wear me mother's. And I knew it wasn't fair to be wearing her so much and to wear her only pair. <laughs> well, be now the face was flying on Mary Ann. I thought she'd blow a fuse, and the language that come over, I never heard a woman use. And just to that, she pushed me back and knocked me off me feet. And in the melee that followed, I lost me cap and me bottom row of teeth. <laughs> well, I freewheeled down that boring, hopping off each ditch, with me two ears still ringing with the roars of yon old bitch. <laughs> And if ever I meet that expert, I'll tell him to take his plan. And I stick it where the sun don't shine, and to hell with Mary Ann! <laughs>